There we go. Mm -hmm. And now you should see a very fancy and sophisticated presentation, right? Yes. Awesome. Um, so first, all of uh, any sort of pitching is about storytelling, right? And why is that important? Because stories are the most important thing in all of our lives, whether we know it or not. It's, it's how we see ourselves. You know, my story is me and yours is yours, et cetera. And it's how people learn and it creates, a, you know, a myth, whether that's like a founding myth or a creation myth. It gives people context to remember things and make connections. And it gives them easy ways to share information, right? They retell the story. Uh, so just to make sure everybody understands that. And then, you know, what the way this kind of pitch to operations thing works is very much a chicken and egg issue. Uh, or I, I, I made this presentation 30 minutes ago. So it's also, I'm pointing to the circle here. It's also kind of this uh, virtuous cycle of like, I, I start and then I inform myself and it keeps getting better and better and better. So I'm not sure which part, where this starts. In my experience, it usually starts with somebody giving an elevator pitch, like, hey, I've got this thing. And then you ask questions and they answer questions and it gets deeper and deeper and better and better. Um, so what's an elevator pitch and who's it for? Um, the, the pro tip is the elevator pitch, just like if you're pitching a movie, uh, the old, the old saw is like, if you can't describe it in a paragraph, you don't really have a story. You know, you don't have a movie, you don't have a business. If you can't boil it down to that and it makes sense and connections, uh, then you really don't have anything. So the elevator pitch is really for two things. It, it's for you as a founder, but it's also... Uh, obviously to generate interest. Um, as a founder tool or as a CEO tool, it's the thing that's gonna drive like, how do you do things? What is it that you're gonna do? So there's a, there's a very easy uh, equation, right? Um, there's an inevitable problem that exists with or without you. You know, the, and I'll show you an example in a moment, but you're gonna describe a problem that if you don't exist, it doesn't matter. This thing still does. And it's going to be solved a certain way, right? The house is on fire, whether I'm in it or not. Uh, it's going to be put out with water. Yay. How do I do that best or in a unique way? And, and lastly, if I, if I solve this problem, these good things happen, right? So this is the cornerstone of everything you're going to talk about from this point forward. So a kind of good example, um, one that I know very well. So the inevitable problem, television viewership is broken. Immense amount of money is wasted. That's a fact, right? You can, you can, you can describe that in a lot of ways. Um, it, it's going to be solved uh, essentially by making it like digital. You're going to bring viewership data and person level matching, put those together, people will get the answer right? I solve it because I've got 6 million households that are matched uh, for television viewing. I get that data every day. Life is good, right? Uh, if that happens, the $100 billion spent on TV uh, programming and advertising every year is going to be measured effectively. And uh, uh, routinely 20% of that is now pulled back by the owners, right? So, so if I do this, somebody's going to wind up with $14 billion. Yay. But back to that cornerstone, there's an inevitable problem exists, whether you are there or not. Somebody's going to solve that problem using, generally speaking, these methods. You use those methods uniquely this way. When that happens, the fire gets put out. Cool. Questions? Jump in anytime. Uh, because this is the first time through. Yeah, wow. anyone feel free to unmute themselves and jump in with any questions. So the next step is you've got this elevator pitch that says, 
Uh, I like the fire example better. House is on fire. Somebody's going to put it out with water. I have a really great hose. When I do that, all the fires will disappear. And, and you've got to turn that into a pitch deck. And pitch decks are, are fabled beasts, right? There's a million ways to describe them and everybody's got their thing. And I'm sure there are books and eBooks and, you know, paid courses that tell you, here's how you make a pitch deck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Really a pitch deck is just one level down extending the elevator pitch. So they're not Bigfoot. They're not these mythical creatures. They're just dudes in monkey suits, right? There's no magic to any of this. Um, basically, when you, when you create a pitch deck, you just need to answer a few questions. Who are you? Uh, what are your bona fides? Like, so, <laughs> you know, I'm a fireman. That's how I know the answer to these questions. Um, what's the opportunity? How you're going to meet it? And how you make money? So if you go back to your pit to your elevator pitch and you have those four tenants, now you're just going to go one level below each of those. You're going to add one level of detail to each piece. Maybe not one level, but one one time down, right? So if you go back to number one, television industry is in dire trouble, right? You're going to describe that problem in greater detail with concrete examples, right? And you'll, somewhere in here, I have an asterisk uh, that says, you know, you're gonna introduce yourself at some point and people prefer to do that at different times, right? It's you and your team that are doing this. I prefer to do it up front, right? But at some point you're gonna answer that question. So, so you're gonna take that first bucket, the inevitable problem, and describe it and make it concrete. How do, how do I know that? How do you, you know, why should I believe you, right? So in this case, you're gonna say, the 100 billion TV industry isn't measured in a meaningful way. This is how it's currently measured. These are the weaknesses in it. Uh, it's a fucking mess. As an example, da, 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 right? And then you're gonna to go to point number two. The way to solve this is like this. And you're going to, again, describe uh, uh, in detail how that would get solved and the differences. And we, we I have always said, um, this is where you can name names, right? So another way to describe this portion of your story is this is, the, this is your competitive section right? What's going on right now? How are people trying to solve this problem right now? And how are they failing? But back to, you know, your, your cornerstone, it's going to get solved this way. Right now it's a mess because da, 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 right? So you're just adding concrete detail uh, to that statement. Uh, then how am I going to solve this, right? This is your opportunity slide in a sense. So you're going to say, look, we do this. Uh, we do it better than these people. We're going to go to market this way, right? So this is really the meat of any pitch deck is um, if, you, if you can imagine the elevator pitch or the pitch deck, part of the purpose of those first two points is everyone should be agreeing with you already, right? You've told them about an inevitable problem and a method that's going to be used to solve it. It doesn't involve you yet. So everyone, if they're not agreeing with you, you've got a real problem because maybe the problem isn't inevitable. Maybe they can't see that the house is on fire and it's gonna be put out with water. But in, in a reasonable world, at this point, anyone you're talking to is saying, yeah, you know, houses on fire are a problem and somebody's gonna put them out with water, right? Now the opportunity that you're going to describe is how you, are going to solve that problem best, right? So you're going to say, uh, I've got immense access to water. 
I've got these giant hoses. Uh, these other people fail because they don't have hoses. Maybe they have access to water. Maybe they used to have access to water, but it's all dried up. Um, but the, you're now going to describe um, uh, several things, how you're going to fix it, but also how you're, how you're going to get to market. Right. Um, and when that happens, uh, what is going to happen, right? This, oh, here's my asterisk. Um, some people, when they de describe their solution, that's when they introduce their team and say, look, we're going to solve this because my teammates and I have this experience, these qualifications um, uh, to do so. Then we're going to describe how you make money, right? So in, in, um, uh, in a jumping off point, this is where you're going to bring financials into the picture, right? So when we get to operational levers, this, the, the emphasis changes and, and everything becomes about a financial plan. So you need some top line financials that say, when I solve this problem, these things are going to happen, right? I'm going to make money this way. And there are generally uh, three big buckets that you wanna focus on when you answer this question in a pitch deck and when you translate it into an operational plan. What's the cost of, of making the thing? What's the cost of selling the thing? And therefore, what does is, what is my runway look like? You know, who's gonna manage my finances and how much money do I need? How long do I have? Uh, what is, what is you know, what, what we think of as what is the cash problem, right? What's the cash flow? You may say, I've got a lot of money coming but it comes in in these chunks, but I need money right now because I have to hire these people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what, you, what you're going to describe here is very succinctly, I'm going to go to market this way. People are gonna pay me this much money to do these things. I'm gonna have this many of them over time, and therefore I'm going to make this much money. If you give me $2 million, we're going to do this with it. The fallout, the, the, the three big pieces that come out of this portion of your story are um, uh, first, a revenue projection. Second, uh, a use of proceeds, which is really important to any investor. You're going to give me money. This is what I'm going to do with it. Tying that to a plan is far more valuable and impressive to anybody, to you or to a potential investor than just saying, uh, you're gonna give me $2 million, I'm gonna use 500,000 for this, 500,000 for that, 500,000 for that, 500,000 for vacations. Thank you very much. Um, because they have to believe that you know what to do with that money, right? First and foremost, when they look at you, will they give you that money? And if you say, my use of proceeds is to spend $142,000 on this, da, 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 that's, that's way more valuable to you and to them. Um, so, and then the third thing is your cash, right? How, how is cash going to flow against that? What does $2 million buy me in terms of time? And when will you need more money? So if you think about it, it's like a revenue plan, use of proceeds, and a runway. What do you... What does that get me? Does that get me six months? Does that just get me a product developed? Uh, or does it get me to uh, break even, right? All that's really important because it's gonna ask the question, well, what do you need next, right? So let's step back through that and try it again. <laughs> um, so if you add one level to the inv inevitable problem, you're going to describe it in detail with an example, right? You're gonna say that that's the house that's on fire. Here's a picture of it. Here's the heat. It's gonna destroy everything in 20 minutes. This happens 92 times a day in our country. Then you're going to describe the second, uh, the 
point, which is how, how it's going to be solved by somebody. Somebody with a lot of water and big hoses is gonna show up and spray this. Everybody knows this, here are five scientists that tell you that water puts out fire, yay. Then you're gonna talk about yourself. Here's how we're going to solve that, the water we have, the hoses we have, how we're going to convince people to use our water, our hoses, and um, uh, here is any, any validation that you have, any example you have, here's a picture of me putting out a campfire with a bucket of water, yay. Um, that's, you, you wanna bring any validation you can to this picture, right? And then you're gonna tell them what you're gonna do with the money. I need $2 million, $2 million. Uh, I'm gonna use it this way. When I use it that way, I'm gonna earn this much money and that'll get me this much time. So the, the, what I think to be the magic of this is now if you're a founder, you've taken a, uh, an elevator pitch, turned it into a pitch deck, and now you want to turn it into like, well, how do I manage that? What, what does this mean? And then that's going to inform all of this again, because you may start building this plan out and find out that you're wrong, right? That water doesn't put out fire or you need much, many more hoses or whatever it might be. If you think of this as job functions, um, think of these as breaking into um, um, a COO, a, uh, a marketing and sales uh, team and a CFO. Now startups, that may all be one person, right? Um, but as you break them down and as you grow as a new CEO or as an experienced CEO, you wanna understand what levers you can pull, which levers need to be pulled, what, they're, what, each, what the details are of each of those, and, and then you're managing a company. Right. So if you translate that into uh, your pitch deck into an operational plan, you're first going to ask, how do I make the product? How does it cost? How much does it cost? How long does it take to make it? What are the single point failures of making this thing? How many people does it take to make it? Do I have them? So this is your operations plan, right? This is what a COO does. I'm making this stuff, I'm controlling the costs, the timing, and, and the quality of the output of that thing. So, so in the first bucket of a plan, even if you do it on a napkin, you're going to describe, I need to make 10 of these things to get to market. Each one takes this long, I need that person to do it, they cost this much money, and if I don't get hoses from that one manufacturer, I'm screwed. So now you understand exactly the components of the cost of making this thing, right? Um, so theoretically, you've now got a top line that says to get to market uh, or to produce these things, each one cost a dollar because I know all of these elements. And from a, from a startup plan, you also know who you have, who you don't have, and, and the time and cost of, of, uh, of getting them. A really common error uh, for an entrepreneur is to vastly underestimate the cost and time of making their thing, frequently because it's invented, right? It's the first time making such a thing. So it's like, oh, you know, I can do that in two days. Uh, and, and there's an old, another old saw about, you know, if only the CTO can make it, it's not really a scalable product, right? So you've got to be able to turn it into a factory and scale it. So, so first bucket for the COO is how do I make this thing? How long does it take? How much does it cost? Who do I need to do it? Are there any single point failures? Yes, no. And you've got that. Now you've got a cost of making your product. The second bucket is you're going to take uh, uh, kind of the, the second paragraph of that third point. How do I get to market and do the same thing? Define the customer, define the universe. How many of them are there? How many of them can I reach? How long will it take to reach them? 
Some of these things are unknown, right? And again, entrepreneurs typically vastly underestimate um, uh, the percentage of the market they'll reach and how and their sales cycle, right? So the sales cycle is how long it takes between me going to market and somebody buying this thing from me, right? Um, that first one is going to take a lot longer. In that. 99% of the time, that's the case. So, so you need accuracy or just to continually reinform yourself about how long is it really taking to sell these things? Is it taking a day, a week, a month, a year? A lot of that depends on the product, obviously. Um, who's doing it? How many salespeople do I have? How much does it cost to do that? So this is really a sales and marketing plan because you're going to ask, what do I need to tell the market about this? And what do I need to get people to pay me money, right? Um, if you combine this with the prior slide, now you've got your cost of goods sold. It actually take, it costs this much money for me to make and sell this thing, right? You don't have corporate overhead in yet, but, but now you've got two big buckets, right? That say, uh, I, I know how much it costs to make this thing. And I know how much I'm going to sell it for, how much that's going to cost and how much I'm going to make from it. So you, now you've got two really cool things. And if you've done this before, you get excited, right? It's like, I've got a cost plan and now I've got a revenue plan and a revenue projection, which is really important. So you, and, and hopefully one of those, the revenue plan is bigger than the other, because if not, then you've got to go back, you got to go back to work. Right, um, raise your price, lower your cost, so forth and so on. Um, this is something that in in a in a formal organization, the CMO and the CRO, the Chief Marketing Officer and Chief Revenue Officer, would run together. Right, I'm going to tell the marketplace about it. You're going to execute sales. You're going to make people pay us money for this. That's all well and good. And then you get to another uh, less sexy place, right? People who are finance people love it. A lot of uh, uh, startup CEOs are not this, but they need to learn. They'll learn it very quickly one way or another, which is how are my customers paying me? Are they paying me? What are the terms? So if I sell it for a dollar, are you giving me a dollar right now? Is it later? Uh, do I bill you 30 days out, 45 days out, all of those things. Um, and that then turns into a cash plan, right? If, if you're going to sell this for this much, people are going to pay us here. Therefore, I will have money coming in here, right? So now you see carts and horses as, as I think about it. Like when you're a startup, the cart is in front of the horse, for maybe for a long time, but definitely at first, because you need cash to make your product one way or another. So you're either raising money uh, or pre-selling it. It's either customer funded, venture funded, or, or debt funded. Um, and, and I include uh, uh, friends and family, credit cards, and your personal savings as debt, right? So so the money to do this is going to come from one of three places. Either customers are going to pay you right then, <laughs> you know, and maybe you can bootstrap it from the get-go, um, or you're going to sell part of your idea, part of your company as equity, typically, uh, for venture funding, um, or you can, you can get a loan from yourself or from MasterCard or from a bank or from someone else. And, and there's kind of a fine line in there. But you've got three operational levers now in your head that should make a, let's go back to my favorite slide, that one. <laughs> um, which, you know, which of these comes first? Do you have a plan that you can then clearly state in an elevator pitch? Or are you making this pitch and then figuring it out with a plan? And the answer is yes, 
It's both of those things. In every experience I've ever had, it's, it's been, you, somebody starts with an idea and it, it kind of forms into this kind of molten -y thing. And, and napkin math says, you know what? I think I could sell that for a dollar and make it for 50 cents and it'd be really cool. It's gonna solve these problems. Yeah, that works. And then as they start to flesh it out, they have to, they have to rework it, right? And sometimes maybe it's just the numbers change. Sometimes it's how the market goes. Sometimes it's the idea, right? It's like, I thought it was about fire hoses and water. It's not because I can't get my trucks to places fast enough. It doesn't really work. Uh, it's really about some sort of flame retardant in airplanes but I'm putting, I'm still solving that same problem just in a different way. And this is the virtue um, of being able to tie these things together because of the other experience I've had, and, and I'm sure many people have, is that, um, that they aren't linked, right? Somebody gets to a pitch deck and, and it fails because you'll be asked a question, um, uh, how much does that cost? I don't know. How much are you going to make? I don't know. We, I've been in many, 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 many instances where somebody says, uh, you say, okay, that's great. How big's the market? And they say, well, there's 8,000 of those people. Great. How many are you going to reach? 8,000. Like, <laughs> I don't think that's true. Right? So it's just that, that, they haven't been through the plan part, the third part of this enough to say, realistically, one person cannot make 8,000 phone calls or do these things or, or you don't have enough cash to reach them, whatever it might be. Um, but if you, if you build this as a, as a virtuous circle and continually reinform it, then you should be able to essentially describe your plan, whether that's in a minute, in an elevator pitch, an hour in a, in a uh, pitch deck for funding or for sales or whatever it might be. And lastly, to your organization and to yourself as an operational plan. So that's my, that's my pitch. <laughs>